Hi everyone, this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of vitamin C deficiency. Before we talk about those signs and symptoms, let's talk about what vitamin C is. So vitamin C is what we would call ascorbic acid. It is an essential water-soluble vitamin. It is an important antioxidant, and it comes from a variety of dietary sources, including citrus fruits, so oranges and lemons are classic dietary sources for vitamin C, but we can also find it in tomatoes, strawberries, guava, bell peppers, potatoes, and broccoli. Now, vitamin C deficiency can occur from reduced dietary consumption. And what's very important to make note of here is that it is more commonly observed in elderly populations, more common in overweight and obese populations, and it's more common in ill patients, especially people who are chronically ill, and we can often see it in hospitalized settings. Now, vitamin C is very important because it is required for many different processes in the body. Some of these can include collagen synthesis. So collagen is that very important abundant protein that is classically found in the skin, but it is found in many different parts of the body. Vitamin C is also important in the synthesis of keratin. Keratin is that very strong, hard protein that we can see in hair and nails. Vitamin C is also important in catecholamine synthesis. So catecholamines like norepinephrine and epinephrine. It's also important in what we call carnitine biosynthesis. So carnitine is something that's important in fatty acid metabolism. And we can also see it being important for immunological functioning. So there are many different signs and symptoms that can occur from a vitamin C deficiency. And a vitamin C deficiency is what we would call scurvy. So before we continue, I do want to just briefly mention the fact that patients can have what we would call a subclinical vitamin C deficiency. So in a subclinical vitamin C deficiency, you may not have very obvious or severe signs and symptoms. You may have very mild forms of the following signs and symptoms we're going to talk about as we go through this lesson. But I want to mention that here because subclinical vitamin C deficiency can be very common. And some of the signs and symptoms we're going to talk about as we go through can be from what we would call a clinical vitamin C deficiency, which is scurvy. And those cases can present with more severe signs and symptoms and even life-threatening signs and symptoms in some cases. So we'll talk about those as we go through this lesson. So the first category of signs and symptoms I want to talk about with regards to vitamin C deficiency is dental signs and symptoms. So one important one is going to be gingivitis. So gingivitis is going to be inflammation of the gingiva. So you can see here we have reddened gums. Sometimes we can see bleeding gums. And then we can also see receding gums occurring as well. So receding gums, the gums pull away from the teeth. And this can lead to loose teeth or even teeth that fall out because gums aren't holding them in place. And then we can see higher likelihood of dental caries. Now, dental caries are dental cavities. So if you have a vitamin C deficiency or even a subclinical vitamin C deficiency, it's not significant, you may have some of these issues in a milder form. The next group of signs and symptoms I want to talk about here is hematological and connective tissue signs and symptoms. So these are going to include petechia and purpura. So you might be asking, what are petechia and purpura? So petechia and purpura are these findings on the skin. So petechia are small red dots on the skin and purpura are slightly larger. And what they are are these superficial bleeds under the skin. So we can see this in more severe cases of vitamin C deficiency, although we may see it in milder forms as well. Ecchymoses are something else we may see, and you may again be wondering what is ecchymoses. Ecchymoses are bruises. So bruises can be more likely to occur in a vitamin C deficiency, easier bruising, for instance. And what bruises are essentially are larger superficial bleeds. And then we can also see anemia more likely to occur in vitamin C deficiency, but it is a particular type of anemia, and that is hemolytic anemia. So hemolytic meaning breakdown of the red blood cells themselves. So it's reduced red blood cells or reduced hemoglobin due to hemolysis. So it's a destruction of red blood cells. And because of anemia, we can see signs and symptoms of anemia. The next category of findings we can see with a vitamin C deficiency are dermatological signs and symptoms. So these are going to involve the skin and the hair. So in a vitamin C deficiency or scurvy, we can see what we would call corkscrew hairs. So essentially the hairs can be coiled to look like a corkscrew. And the reason that this can occur is because as mentioned before, vitamin C is important in collagen and keratin synthesis. So if there's issues with collagen and keratin synthesis, the hair itself can actually lose its proper shape. It can actually begin to become coiled like a corkscrew. We can also see issues with perifollicular hemorrhage. So perifollicular hemorrhage is bleeding around hair follicles. So it's a pinpoint bleed. So it's bleeding right at the follicle or around the follicle. 
And then we can also see follicular hyperkeratosis. So follicular hyperkeratosis is where there's excessive keratin that accumulates at or around the follicle. So as mentioned before, vitamin C helps with keratin synthesis. If there are any issues with keratin synthesis, we can actually see buildup of keratin around hair follicles. So if we were to look at the hair follicle, we can see this bump that occurs around the hair follicle. So it can be bumps on the skin around hair follicles. This can be what we would call follicular hyperkeratosis, and this can occur in vitamin C deficiencies as well. The next category of signs and symptoms are immunological, so the immune system. As mentioned before, vitamin C is important in immunological functioning. If you want to learn more about this in detail, I have a whole lesson on this topic, as vitamin C is very important and has many different functions in the immune system. One of them is wound healing. So if there's a vitamin C deficiency, even subclinical vitamin C deficiency, we can have issues with wound healing. So it's essentially reduced ability of wounds to heal. It may take longer to heal it, so it doesn't heal like it should. This can be due to immunological deficiencies. So white blood cells use a lot of vitamin C. If there's not enough vitamin C, they may not function properly, but it also can occur because vitamin C is important for collagen synthesis. We can also see increased risk of respiratory infections if you have a vitamin C deficiency. So pneumonia and common cold can occur more commonly and for longer periods of time and have increased severity. So there can be increased severity of common colds. So the common cold may be more severe and longer lasting in a vitamin C deficiency. And again, this can apply to a subclinical vitamin C deficiency as well. Other infections may also be more likely to occur if you have a vitamin C deficiency as well, as vitamin C has been shown, at least in the lab, that it has antibacterial, antiviral, and antiprotozoal properties. So vitamin C deficiency may increase likelihood or severity of other infections, although there's not as much evidence for this as there is for respiratory infections. And then in more severe cases of vitamin C deficiency, especially those that are more chronic, so a more severe case of scurvy, we can see issues with what we would call Sjogren's syndrome-like signs and symptoms. So Sjogren's syndrome is itself a chronic autoimmune condition, but vitamin C can trigger something that looks like Sjogren's syndrome. So Sjogren syndrome is going to involve dry mouth and dry eyes. That's going to be the typical hallmark findings. If you want to learn more about Sjogren syndrome, please check out my full lesson on this topic. So the next category of signs and symptoms that can occur is musculoskeletal, so involving the muscles and the bones. So we can see joint pain in some cases of vitamin C deficiency. So arthralgia and arthritis. Arthralgia is a term for joint pain. Arthritis is a term for joint inflammation. So we can see patients who have vitamin C deficiency having joint aches and pains. And again, this is associated with a deficiency of vitamin C. We can also see issues with myalgias. Myalgias are muscle aches and pains. And this may occur in vitamin C deficiency due to reduced carnitine synthesis. As mentioned before, vitamin C is important in carnitine biosynthesis. And we can also see issues with leg pain. So pain and tenderness occurring over the legs can occur as well. We can also see issues with long bone swelling. This is going to occur in more severe cases of scurvy. So swelling may occur in some cases over long bones. So we can see perhaps on the femur, the long bone in the upper leg. And we can also see issues with what we would call pseudoparalysis. Pseudoparalysis is voluntary reduction of muscle movement due to discomfort, pain, or some other cause. So it's not actual paralysis, but the patient is less likely to move because of some other issue or discomfort. And then we can also see neurological and psychological signs and symptoms. These can include fatigue and weakness. So lack of energy, feeling very tired and weak can occur in vitamin C deficiency. We can also see issues with depression. Depression along with the fatigue, low mood is associated with vitamin C deficiency and irritability can occur with this as well. So they can have a very irritable temperament. And then we can also see neuropathy more likely to occur. Neuropathy is paresthesias, so numbness and tingling, pinprick sensations. These can occur in vitamin C deficiency. So not only can it occur by itself from vitamin C deficiency, but if patients have had some other condition like shingles, and after shingles, some patients are at an increased risk of what we would call post-herpetic neuralgia. So post-herpetic neuralgia is essentially nerve pain after shingles. If you have a vitamin C deficiency, you're more likely to get post-herpetic neuralgia after shingles. And neuropathy in general is going to be a late stage finding. So late stage meaning that you've had vitamin C deficiency, typically severe vitamin C deficiency for long periods of time. And then there are gastrointestinal signs and symptoms as well, including diarrhea. 
So increased frequency or decreased consistency of stool, so watery diarrhea can occur, and there can be loss of appetite as well. Loss of appetite in vitamin C can actually be an early sign of vitamin C deficiency, and weight loss may occur, or poor weight gain. And then there are some other signs and symptoms as well, including hypertension. So hypertension is a high blood pressure. This is associated with low levels of vitamin C. Dyspnea. Dyspnea is shortness of breath. And again, this is also associated with a vitamin C deficiency, and it occurs later in disease. So again, it's a late stage finding. And we can also see tachypnea. Tachypnea is increased respiratory rate. So respiratory rate greater than 20 breaths per minute. And again, this can be found in vitamin C deficiency as well. Now, there are particular late stage signs and symptoms. We talked about a few as we went through, but there are some very significant ones here I want to mention. If you've had a very severe and long-lasting vitamin C deficiency or scurvy, these are some of the findings you can see later on. One is generalized edema, so there can be generalized swelling throughout the body. There can be reduced urine output or oliguria. There can be jaundice, so yelling of the skin and the whites of the eyes. There can be issues with convulsions, so seizures can occur. We can see fevers occurring. We can see what we would call hemopericardium, bleeding in the pericardial sac around the heart. This can be very significant and have a high mortality. And then we can also see cerebral hemorrhage, bleeding in the brain. This can also be a significant cause of mortality as well. As we've seen throughout this lesson, there are bleeding risks from vitamin C deficiency, some very minor as we see those petechia and purpura, but some more significant like the hemopericardium and cerebral hemorrhage that can occur in severe and long-lasting scurvy cases. So if you want to learn more about vitamin C deficiency and scurvy, please check my full lesson on this topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.